Hello, this is Mike Lilwick from Northern Kentucky University, and today we're going to talk about classes. Now, classes in Flex 3 are absolutely essential. If you're going to build enterprise applications, if you're going to unleash the real power of Flex, you're going to use classes. So what is a class? A class is a blueprint about how an object acts. Now, what is an object? An object has properties like a state and methods like a behavior. For example, my dog is an object. It has a state, a name, a color, a breed, and a behavior like barking, fetching, licking. But remember, you wise guys or gals, your wife or husband is not an object. They are people. And so what are people? Well, they have properties and methods, but are not classes. <laughs> so let's take a look at Flex real quick. A Flex 3 class has six parts. One is a package that wraps the class and tells you the position of the class within your file structure. It has import statements, which are the building blocks for your class. It has a class statement, which defines your class and the name of the file. Properties, which are variables. A constructor function, which runs when the class is instantiated or created. And methods, which are functions. Now, four or six properties of methods, or states and behaviors, or they're the essential things which an object possesses. So at this point, let's show you how to create a class in Flex and demonstrate this through action. So we're in Flex 3 and we're going to create our first class. But in order to do that, we have to create our project. So let's do that. We'll right click on the screen here and go New, Flex Project, and we'll call it My First Class. Cool. Hit Finish and you've created your project structure and now within the uh, source folder we're going to create our class. So right click on the source folder go to new and click on action script class. This is great, going to generate all the structure we need. Now we're going to put our package name in first. This is very important. It gives you a distinct uh, path to your package which will keep classes from interfering with each other. This is why Macromedia often or Adobe often discourages the use of the wildcard because packages, properties, and methods can have similar names depending on what you're doing and those similar names can conflict if they are on the same level. So we use this uh, path name or this package name to create a distinct path. Uh, many people reverse their web addresses. Mine is www.nkuas.org. I'll just call this org.nkuas and we'll put something else in here like my first class. Nothing's written in stone here. You can call it whatever you want uh, and this will create the folders that your uh, class will go into this is the name of your class. We'll call this my class, and this will also be the name of the action script file that's created. We'll choose public, and we'll skip super class and come back and catch it again when we extend the button class. So we'll hit finish, and automatically you can see my file structure has been generated over here in the source file. So I have org underneath that nkuas, underneath that my first class, and underneath that myclass.as. This is going to become very important when we import this class uh, into the MXML language. And up here you can see the uh, uh, action scripting here. Here's package org.nkuas.myfirstclass. And below that is where your import statements will go. This is the six parts of a class. And then you have your, uh, your class name. And below that is where your uh, properties are going to go. And here's the constructor function. Notice there's no void or uh, semicolons here. And this is what's instantiated and run when the class is created. And below that will go your methods. That's your functions. And that's the six parts of a class. And that's automatically generated for you uh, in Flex 3. Next time, we're actually going to extend the button class and show you how this works. So now that we understand the class structure, let's create a real example. Let's extend the button class. So I'm actually going to minimize uh, this uh, folder here. I'm going to right-click again, and we're going to extend the button class. So let's go uh, uh, class, action script class. And we'll just call this package, uh, once again, uh, com.nkuas.com button and uh, class and that'll put some, everything in a different package structure. We're going to call this name uh, my button extends. Make it public and now we're going to use the super class 
and we'll just call this button. And at that point, we'll hit finish. And now my class package structure has been created. You can see over here, I have the package name com.nkus.buttonclass. It's created the folder com, nkus, button class, and in that is my class name. Uh, it's automatically imported the uh, mxn.controls.button uh, super class, so I'm in good shape here. It uh, extends automatically for me. Uh, my button uh, extends button, and that's great. And below you have the constructor class, uh, which uses the word super. Now, what does that mean? Well, a super class is a class from which other classes are derived. A super class is called a parent class as well. And the word super is a syntax for calling a super class constructor. Now, many compilers, if you leave that off, will just call the constructor anyway. And I can actually comment this out, and it'll make no difference. But I leave it in there, Macromedia put it in there, or Adobe put it in there, and it's useful. And if it's not in there, and it doesn't automatically call the uh, constructor, then uh, you'll throw an error. So we're good there. Let's create a method. And in my method, I actually want to override a protected class. So below our constructor goes our methods, and we'll type in override protected function. Okay, our function is the click handler, and we've got some code hitting here, so I'll hit click. Try that again. Click handler. There it is right there. It is a mouse event, and I'll put my brackets in. And what I want to do is every time I click on the button, I want it to move forward 10 pixels. So I'll just call it this, which refers to the class. The property is x plus equals 10, and that will change the position of my button. And now my class is completed. I can go ahead and save that, and I need to import that into MXML. And there's two ways to do that, and we're going to show you how to do that next. Now that we've created our package, we want to bring that into our Flex project. And we want it to live inside the MXML, and there's two ways to do that. You can do that through using namespace or action script. Let's use namespace first. I'm going to click on the uh, My First Class package or application. We're going to come along here into the application uh, line. So in the MX application tag, I'm going to come along here, open up a space, and I'm going to type in XML namespace, or NS, give it a custom name. And I can call this whatever I want. I could call it uh, Mike P N S. People use lots of different tags for this. But that will become my identifier tag, and that's going to equal, put my quotes in there, the class path. So I'm going to go com dot NKUAS dot button class dot wildcard. There you go. And now that should be defined as a MXML namespace. So let's see if it is. I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, less than sign in here. And up comes my code hinting. And I should be able to find this name in my code hinting. Remember we called it custom. So I should be able to find custom in there. And there it is. Isn't that great? And it's the extend button class. And now I'm ready to put that new extended button on the stage. It's inherited all the button properties like ID. I'll call it my button. Let's give it a label. We'll call it press me. And we'll go ahead and close that. And let's take a look at design view. So I'm going to click here and look at design view. Oh, I have a line error in line two. Let's take a look and see where that is. Let's take a look at line two. And you see I've actually put a uh, semicolon in there. Don't need that. Let's go ahead and now run the application again. Save and run. And there's my button on the stage. When I click it, it moves 10, moves 10, moves 10, moves 10. That's fantastic. Let's go back and take a look at design view now, as we did before. And we can actually move that button just wherever we want to. So it's inherited all the properties of the button class. So the extend is extremely powerful. And it's used over and over again in action scripting. Now, before we proceed on to a more complicated example, I want to uh, just address these issues of names like public and private and uh, protected. What does that mean? Well, basically, it's not that complicated. It has to do with scope, uh, where you can and when you can access 
these methods and properties. Public are properties and methods that are public when they're accessible within the class as well as from instances from the class. Private are properties or methods that are private when they're accessible only within the class. Protected are properties or methods are protected when they're accessible only when the class only within the class and the subclass. And internal are properties that are internal. They're accessible within the package. So you'll be seeing these four names. They're not that complicated. Just get used to them because you'll be using them as well. And as we proceed to more complicated examples, we'll explain them in more detail. Now in the next video, we're going to show you how to import these classes through ActionScript. And we're going to use the non-trivial example of Yahoo Maps.